So this is a very special day and we are going to reveal the cover of Tana's brand new book, The Relentless so Courage of a Scared Child. And I'm so proud of her uh, for it's doing this. It's been a very so, long time in coming. Do you want to show? Book. Yes. So this is my book cover, Relentless Courage of a Scared Child. Hopefully you guys can see that. Very excited. And she's very happy about it, even though I had to twist her arm. You did. You had to nudge me. For you years to nudge me to little. write, <laughs> drag you kicking and screaming. So it's really um, awesome. I'm so proud of her. The book Thank you. debuts uh, January 5th. Up for pre-order now. We've got the pre-order page up at relentlesscourage.com. And we have all kinds of fun stuff for you guys. Um, so we're super excited about that. My team has been working incredibly hard. So I just want to take a moment to thank everybody for how hard they have worked on this. Um, it's been pretty amazing. Um, it's an amazing effort and it takes a village when you write a book as you know you've written 42 this is not my 42nd it's my 10th but um it's a lot of work That's so a lot of experience. yeah we've put together a free event for people we've got amazing speakers coming um for the free event on december 12th we've got jj virgin and we've got um pastor derwin, pastor gray. derwin gray and miles mcpherson and carolyn leaf um we are we've got some amazing guest speakers so um, and we're going to talk about not just the book, but we're also going to talk about overcoming trauma. Yeah, overcoming anxiety, this is trauma, a and grief. Story about a scared, you know, emotional, a scared child who ended up leading a brain warrior movement. And you really, the book is fun, it's edgy. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart. There's murder. There's assault. <laughs> there's. I'm not the, laughing because it's funny. I'm just. <laughs> there's the mafia. There's all sorts of great intrigue. Um, but the most important part of it is there's transformation. And, uh, you know, so how, and all of us have scared children in sight of us and so how do we soothe and take care of that scared child and really transform her or him to make a big difference in the world so i'm yeah i'm really it was really not an easy thing to do you had been pushing me for quite some time and whenever you write um a memoir you have to be it's tricky because especially if the people in your memoir are still alive <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, so um, if the characters are still alive, it's really tricky. Um, and so he keeps talking about how edgy it is, and it is, but it's actually the family-friendly version. And um, it's not fiction. I'm watching the comments. This is fact. No, this is a memoir. Um, this is my life story. And it's not my entire life. Obviously, it would be too long. It's a series of stories for a purpose. Well, about are only halfway through. Yeah, well, it's a series of stories for about overcoming and about how, honestly, it's it's really like no matter where you come from, there's hope. That's what I wanted to leave people with. Um, and so it's it's the family sort of family friendly version, I guess. Um, I, I mean, I couldn't write all of the actual details because number one, it wouldn't have been published, <laughs> but, but it wouldn't have been family friendly and the people that are alive wouldn't have allowed it. So let's put it that way. But it's you get the idea. I wrote it in a way where you definitely understand what happened um, and it's pretty crazy. So um, I, you know, I, I, it took time to get the courage to do that. You feel fairly exposed. So what exposed. are some of the big lessons you think people will learn as so they read it? I mean, it's fun and, and it's worth reading because you'll get to know Tana It's not just better. fun, it's sad. It's um, very sad. At points. It's, it's, it's just, it's a great story, but um what are some of the big lessons so there's a couple number one the big the the overarching theme is that there's hope and there's hope for everybody no matter where you've come from you have an opportunity to overcome and so i wanted people to really understand that if i can do it you can do it um and i know everybody's story is different so i'm not trying to minimize where anybody came from 
but I had a 16 year old, my mom was a 16 year old one away who didn't finish high school. And, and we had a lot of chaos and drama in our family. We had a lot of addiction. Um, like you said, my, I had an uncle who was murdered. So I write about that story. So there's a lot of lessons in there. I disconnected with my family because of the drama. I just couldn't do it anymore. I just, to be quite honest with you, when you grow up with that much chaos and just nonstop stuff, there's a point where you're like, if I'm going to survive this, I'm going to pull away. The only person I didn't really pull away from was my mom because my mom, she's, she's kind of a butt kicker. And so she wasn't perfect. It was hard. There was a lot of stuff that, you know, obviously were, was very challenging having a mom that had to work three jobs and left me alone a lot. I was a latchkey kid, but the, the fantastic part about it is, um, in pulling away from those people, I, I, it took a long time to realize that I was really building walls, building, building facades, and that it took me a while to realize, um, well, it took you actually. So, oh no, here, here's a note to everybody watch, listening and watching right now. If you want to stay disconnected from people and you want to keep your walls up, don't marry a psychiatrist. That's my tip for the day. So he kept wanting to like have everybody in my family come back into my life and he wanted to see their brains and he wanted to fix them. And I'm like, <laughs> no, you don't understand. This is like Jerry Springer material. We don't want to do this. Which is my day to day so, life at work. Yeah, but you do it for work. This was my life. <laughs> this was this difference between doing it clinically and doing it personally. So, um, so the big lessons were when I did finally reconnect with some of these people, I had no idea how much the healing would be for me. The help was for them. The healing was for me. I argued so with God. A big theme. Yeah, I really argued with God. I didn't want to do it. I kept telling God he had the wrong person. You kept telling me God had the perfect person. And the, the big lesson over and over again was the help was for them. The healing was for me. And I almost deprived myself of that healing. And so that was really important. And then another big lesson is that behavior is complicated. Easy to call people bad, much harder to ask why. So talk about, we almost called this book, One Less Scared Child, which I like the current title a lot. It's, yeah, but I love scared One Less Scared Child. And that's how you open the book. So I opened the book. The way that this all started was with an epiphany. So it started because, um, Oh, this guy, Jared said, hold on. He said, you're going to love my family. Yeah. So if, you, if you're <laughs> like me, I always, I think of myself as garden variety dysfunctional. Um, you know, my family was just sort of garden variety dysfunctional. But when I, I would watch Daniel's face and he's just got this like, look that psychiatrists have. And I'm like, you're in that look, like you're enjoying this way too much. And he's <laughs> analyzing me and he's like, there's nothing garden variety about all of this. So, um, but when you grow up with that, it becomes your normal and you tell, begin to think it's normal. Oh, Salvation Army. Yes. So I was, um, called to ask, I, I was asked to help change the menu and the food for one of the largest chemical addiction recovery programs, um, in the country. And I agreed. I'm like, that's really cool. I, that's right up my alley. I love helping people with nutrition. And so I said, yes, he was going to help with the people. I was going to help with the menu. And then the leader who had gotten really healthy doing my program said, no, no, I need you to help them. I want you to come talk to them, to, to the people, the recovering addicts. And I'm like, no, I can do the menu. I can't work with the people. And I didn't realize until that moment, actually, how judgmental I was. I didn't realize until that moment how much anger and hurt and that I was still carrying from my past. I had an uncle who was a heroin addict. And, and so I didn't really fully grasp it until then. And then all of a sudden I'm on stage I, because he keeps nudging me, pushing me, whatever you want to call it. Um, and through a lot of prayer, I finally decided, okay, I'm going to go ahead and go through with this, even though I was uncomfortable. And so I'm on stage. I'm, I'm actually fairly resentful. I'm fairly judgmental. I'm standing on stage. And I, I realize like I'm judging them, they're judging me. And we have this amazing breakthrough moment and I'm praying on stage that God will just help me somehow break through my own judgmental thoughts. And it strikes me. I have this epiphany that we were all just scared children. At one point, we were all in the same boat. I don't know why some people turn left and some people turn right. That's above my pay grade. I just don't know. But what I do know is that at one point we were all in the same boat and that if I could be, you know, even a small part of their healing, even a small part of helping one person, you know, change their life, make good decisions. 
get healthy in some way, then that would be one less scared child in the world. That would be one less scared little girl who feels like an afterthought, one less scared little boy who feels like he needs to be invisible because that's safer. And it, it just, it changed my life. And that was the most rewarding work I've ever done. And, and by the way, I think they were probably some of the most grateful people that I've ever worked with. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's a great story and it'll lead you to ask yourself what's holding you back from helping the people in your life that need you. And yes, it's hard and it can be messy, but it gives you a sense of meaning and purpose. We call it essence mm -hmm. where you turn your pain into purpose and your level of happiness can go way up because, um, you know, when I think of happy people, I generally think of purposeful people, people who, where it's not just about them, it's about all of them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's interesting because I had childhood, there's childhood trauma. A lot of us have had childhood trauma. Some of us are smart enough to learn from the childhood trauma and not take it into our adulthood. I wasn't. Um, so I, I had self-induced trauma later um, in my early 20s and as a result went into pretty, pretty significant depression. So, um, you know, I think it's really about just the cycle of life and overcoming and grace and, um, you know, how behavior is complicated and it's easier to, it's easier to call people bad and harder to ask why. And it's, it's, there's, you know, incredible stories of forgiveness and overcoming and and learning how to question your own thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. So when we met 15 years ago, um, we're actually coming up on the 15th anniversary in two months. And um, you know, of course, I want to scan her because that's what <laughs> I do. It's like I'm really fond. It's of like her. someone wants to see my naked brain. I had never heard that line, and I have to say, he got points for the most creative line. I was like, <laughs> brownie points on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to see her brain, and she has a great brain. But when you grow up in trauma, your mind often is not programmed in the most helpful way. You're programmed for anxiety, you're programmed for fear, you're programmed for always watching for the shoe to drop, which can just steal your joy yeah. and your ability to connect. And you tell the story in the book of going to Esalen. So one of the first to things I did Byron was Katie. introduce you to my friend, Byron Katie. And it was just literally transformative when you realize you don't have to believe every stupid thing you think. And yeah, and I remember really when we were story. there at Esalen and you're like, no one's going to know me. No, one's no, gonna I, know was, my story. I was the queen of facades. <laughs> just do the makeup, do the hair, put the clothes on. No and one will see how nice you are. If you want to be that, don't marry a psychiatrist, especially yeah one that wants to change the world yeah no i was i was convinced that if i just had enough makeup and clothes and you know um the, the paint and lacquer if you will no one would see how messed up i was and yeah. and yeah um that's the first time you someone had came up to you and said they had an eating disorder and you said you did too and yeah. i'm like did you just say that yeah i never could i couldn't ever talk about it because it was not the perfect image yeah and does having to be perfect is that easier it's freaking exhausting <laughs> okay it's just, is that easier than being authentic it's exhausting and you know there was something about that whole that whole it, it, i'm going to be honest there was a period where it's a little bit painful to finally let go of all of your you know your nonsense and your garbage and your baggage and um, you, you have to make a choice and there, there's work to it. But when I did that, it was, 
it's so such a relief. And I often use this analogy of, of popping a boil. And I, I know you hate when I do that, but I'm a nurse and I can't help it. And so it's like popping a boil because all the ugly stuff comes out. It's building up pressure and it's sore and it's painful. And then it just heals. And then quite honestly, I, the part I love the most is that I actually don't care what people think anymore. Like I never thought I would be that person. It's like, I, I want to be close to people because I love people. I want to be connected to people. I want to help people. But if you want to be an, in an unhealthy way, you know, judgmental and, and harmful, especially on social media, how people are being, I just don't have the need for it. And I don't really care what people think as much. It's just, it really doesn't matter to me. And it truly is possible to get to that place. Yeah. It's so cool. So Shallow we, the relentless courage of a scared child. Now in the description, we put cover reveal and we showed the cover. Let's show it again. It's I'm so happy with this book. It's so you beautiful. can, you can go to relentlesscourage.com and I would be ever so grateful if you pre-order it. And if you do pre-order it, we have all kinds of gifts for you. Um, so, so it's up on Amazon. It's now. up on Amazon. Yep. And it's, um, so the gifts that we have, the, oh, my dog decided to become vocal. Sorry. Um, he thinks he's tough. He's not. So we have um, some really cool stuff. So we've got a mindfulness audio that I created. We have a digital journal. So I wanted you to be able to, to journal on a regular basis. So I've got a digital journal I created. Um, I think writing your story is just so transformative and so powerful. Writing my story was one of the most powerful things I've ever done. Um, because there were things that I actually had remembered a certain way or had been carrying a certain way. And when I wrote it out and interviewed people and actually took the time to recall it in detail, I'm like, oh wait, that was way more complex than I realized. And, and it, it, it just, it's, it helped me see it through an adult perspective instead of from a child's perspective. So I want you to be able to journal. So the journal is one of them. The mindfulness audio is like, I take you through a very short meditation. You don't need to spend hours meditating to get your mind right and get your day started correctly. So I help you with that. There's a one page miracle, something it's a little tool that we have you um, fill out so that you can you know, get your day going right and make sure that you are making the right decisions. It's like, is my behavior getting me what I want? And then we have a course. My favorite part of this is, well, one of my favorite parts is the course. So the course Daniel and I created for you, it's a video course. And honestly, it's, it's really, really helpful and you can share it with people. So I think that that is the best part. It's a series of videos to re and they're not very long, but they're very powerful Overcoming to help you. anxiety, trauma and depression, grief. trauma and grief. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also from now until January 5th, um, up, to a certain number, I'm going to donate one book for everybody who buys a book. I'm going to donate a book. Um, now I would love it if all of a sudden I sold 30,000 books and then I'm probably not going to donate 30,000, but I'm going to donate up to a certain, up to a certain number, which we are going to designate and put on the website. Um, I'm going to donate a book for every book that someone buys. And I'm going to give that to, um, a home, not homeless, but a, a women's shelter. So women's shelters and different organizations where people are, are in need of inspiration. So if they go to relentlesscourage.com, you can learn all about the pre-order gifts uh, and then come to our event. Yeah, but before that, just to let you know, I'm also going to do one other thing. So I am going to give 10% of the proceeds to our foundation. And here's why. Because the one thing people keep writing to me about is, and, and I hear this all the time as well, yeah, you were able to do it because you had help. And that's true, actually. So I'm not going to deny that. I had help. Um, so, and you helped my dad. There's a really cool story in there about my dad being diagnosed with Alzheimer's, but when you actually died, when you actually saw him, he didn't have Alzheimer's. So it's pretty miraculous. My sister who suffered with addiction, um, and some mental health challenges, you know, we helped her. So I'm going to donate money to our foundation. We have a foundation where we actually will help people who are in need. So, um, so for every book purchased, that's part of my my gift back to the community is to, to be able to try to help people. Um, and then we bought our event. So the event is free. It's on December 12th. And if you sign up for the free event, every person who attends, you do have to watch it to the end. But if you stay on the event until the end, we're going to have a way for you to be um, entered into a drawing for a free evaluation at Amon Clinics. Wow. 
Yeah, I know. I didn't probably tell you that, but I probably should have told you that. <laughs> Who knew? Oh, yes. So. Scan your brain change your life so if you know someone yeah so if you're suffering or you know someone who's suffering and right now i just i really felt convicted i didn't know covid was going to happen when i wrote this book i mean i actually had finished it before covid happened but right now people seem to be struggling and suffering more than ever well, and depression tripled from march to october of this year depression went from eight percent which was already high to 27 percent of the population now is the time to work on your brain and on your mind and the relentless courage of a scared child it just gives you a great roadmap with well, a little bit of um terror in so the, if i could process. if i could i i have to tell you the part that surprised me about this is um is that the the endorsements for the people who actually read the book what surprised me is I really um, thought that it was going to be more geared toward women just because I'm female. Um, my best endorsements came from men. Um, one of my favorites, you might have to read it because I, I have a hard time reading it every time I try. Um, one of my favorite endorsements came from Pastor Derwin Gray. He's the lead pastor at Transformational Church in North Carolina. And he wrote, my friend Tana, has, he also went through a lot of trauma, just by the way. So my friend Tana has done a brave thing. She opens up her life, a life the evil one thought he would destroy. <laughs> As you read her story, you will see how Jesus heals and repurposes our hurt so we can become beautiful and powerful. This book is going to help a lot of people. And there are just so many, um, so many great endorsements like that. And I have a couple from men who had gone through pretty abusive home, had lived in abusive homes that, um, that just gave me just powerful, powerful feedback. So this is not just for women. And if you have suffered or you know someone who has suffered, my my inspiration for this was, um, you know, if I could set my own pride aside, my own fear of being being vulnerable, maybe it would inspire someone else to get well. And I had a woman come up to us when we you were speaking, and she um, she said uh, you were at the John Maxwell event. And she came up to me, you had this crowd of people around you. And she came up to me and she said, um, I'm so glad you're here. I was hoping you would be here. I'm not, and I thought she meant us collectively or you. And so I said, oh yeah, Daniel's over there. If you want to talk to him, she's like, no, you, she's like, I've been following you and I've been listening to everything you guys have out. And I read everything you write. And she's like, and I pray and she starts crying. And she said, I've been praying that God would do for my life what he did for yours. That if you can do it, I can do it. And I, I was so shocked because I thought I haven't really told people very much. And so that was when I decided, you know, maybe it's time, maybe it's time to do this. So, well, join us for the events at uh, December 12th and go you to relentlesscourage.com. We, we're so You can also go to tanaamon.com to sign, you'll find all the information for the event. Um, Relentless Courage, it's also wherever books are sold, it's on Amazon, or you can just go to relentlesscourage.com. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much.